Okay, so for today's labs, we're going to be focusing specifically on microbial motility, which encompass labs 12 and 13. For this, focusing on the first lab, lab 12 specifically, focuses on motility in a real time. So we employ a very specific type of slide called a deep well. These are quartz-based uh, glass. So these are a little bit more translucent, a little bit more transparent, more high quality, as opposed to the normal ones you use every day. And so sometimes we recommend people to not use oil immersion, but if we do apply something like a cover slip, we can use it. And this allows us to see cells moving live, as opposed to smearing them and drying them, that kind of thing like we do for our stains. That little concave uh, little uh, divot that you see within these slides allow our microscope to see the uh, cells in their native environment. Now, the purpose behind this lab is very specific. Things move in general, physics tells us, but sometimes the motion that we observe, especially when things are magnified, is not quite real motion. And so scientists had observed this in the past in which when you're observing something at such a high resolution, it appears as if something is moving when in fact it's not. And this is due to, again, physics more than anything else, part of a little bit of the gravitational pull of the earth and the rotation of the earth, and simply from the fact of external factors like small vibrations in the table that you're using because you're putting your weight on it, or the fact that you're breathing or something of that sort, it makes it look like the fluid inside there is moving, as opposed to true motion or true motility in this case, in which now the organisms can be observed kind of floating around, swimming around in any particular direction. So part of this lab is for you to be able to distinguish between something that looks kind of like almost motion, fake motion, if you will, and we refer to this as Brownian motion versus actual motion of the organism, real, real motility, in which the organisms themselves, bacteria, protists, or whatever, have a purposeful mo uh, motility. In other words, you'll see them changing directions in all sorts of ways, and you'll actually see them shift in depth of field and so on and so forth. So the idea behind this is actually quite simple. Part of the definitions you need to know for the exam are the differentiation between motility and Brownian motion, and the fact that one has this very patternized look. It looks like everything is carried by the same current. So if you saw like a river or something like that, everything is kind of flowing in the same direction. That's not real motion, that's Brownian motion, simply from the fact that things are just moving because of physics. Whereas true motility in this case, you'll see the individual organisms independent motion between the organisms in various directions, not just one way all around, but you'll still see them kind of make turns, go up and down kind of in the, X, uh, the Z plane, if you will, and then in shifting kind of in all 360 degrees on a plane. That's the plan behind that. That's where we get to focus on lab 12. Now for lab 13, on the other hand, we get to practice two separate techniques. And so we're detecting two different types of skill sets and two different types of materials to observe also motility. Here, this one is a little bit more passive. Here we get to inoculate the system and then give it about a couple of days before we observe them. The first one in lab 13 is called swarming. That is the actual term we use for this motility. And so what we use is a standard TSA plate, the regular auger that we always use. And then we do what we call a heavy inoculum. So rather than doing a loop and taking just a tiny little swab, sorry, a little kind of pickup of the material on your slide here, we're actually gonna use something like a cotton swab. And so we actually dip it heavily into your organism and kind of place a glop right in the center of the actual plate itself. So you want a heavy inoculation as opposed to most of the time we'll be practicing. Now, the idea behind this is if the organism can move, if the organism is truly motile, so it has motility behind it, what will happen is it will move in these very unique patterns. It will grow for a small amount of time. So you'll see like a large, large colony, but then it'll move, it'll travel. It will travel outward from the center of the plate. And then it'll stop again. And then it'll grow and eat for a little bit and then it'll travel again. And it'll repeat this several times until what it looks like is waves of growth and motion. And so this pattern that looks like concentric circles on a, uh, on a TSA plate is called swarming. I'll show you those images in a second. 
Now, the second portion of uh, lab 13 has to do with a very unique type of medium designed to absorb motility in a tube rather than on a plate. And so those tubes have a, also a specialized name called the motility deep. And so these are slightly shorter tubes. The media kind of resembles auger. It's a little bit uh, lighter, but it contains a very specific uh, color marker that when the organism grows and consumes it, it actually reflects a neat little red color. And so we can actually see where the inoculation occurs. Now for this, rather than using the loop that we normally use in this lab, we use an, a needle inoculum. So in your tool that you have in your lab boxes, you have one that looks like a loop and the other one looks like a flat out needle. So in other words, it's missing the little circle at the end. And so with that needle, you will stab vertically the actual tube itself in one kind of swift jab, trying to keep it from moving too much and then incubate it also for about a couple of days. The idea then is if the organism moves, you'll actually see it move away from the stab line that you created. And if it doesn't, you'll only see growth where you stabbed. And so you'll see the color from the media. There's roughly this kind of translucent yellow. You'll see this red motion behind it, right? And so that pattern also gets called an inverted tree pattern. And the reason behind it is as you do the stab line, the organisms start kind of growing outward as in branches. And it ends up looking like an inverted uh, pine tree. And so it looks like it's kind of growing on the top and then kind of funnels down to the bottom. And so those are the two labs that we get to perform for uh, lab 13, a swarming pattern and a motility deep in that inverted tree pattern. If we actually get to see those patterns themselves, we can conclude that the organism is motile, that it moves basically. And this uh, in uh, collaboration with lab 12, we can establish whether an organism is truly motile or it probably behaves in Brownian motion. So in a moment, we'll show you what those images look like. To be able to conclude this particular experiment, more than anything else, we wanna collect data. So either through observing lab 12 using the deep well, or by observing the data about 24 to 48 hours later. So for this, we will already provide you with a specific uh, compendium for you, can, you guys can see the data. Let me share that image with you guys. So uh, you'll have a material posted on Canvas that says Laboratory 12 and 13, in which here as we go, you'll have uh, more or less the instructions on how to follow this. You guys can be able to do that alone and the materials that are involved. Normally we can provide you with the organisms that are motile and non-motile. So organisms that do move versus ones that don't. And we perform both uh, lab 13 and 12 on them. For lab 12, we place them inside a little bit of water inside the deep well and observe them directly under the microscope, meaning you get to uh, go under the scope and see them move. And then for lab 13, we will do the uh, motility deep stabbing with a needle, as you can see from the table over here. And then we'll also create a plate that has this very, very heavy inoculum in the center. We'll put like a glop of material in the center. And then ideally after about 24 to 48 hours, you'll see the organism, if it moves, it'll start kind of growing and moving and growing and moving, creating these concentric circles that we call uh, swarming. So that's the plan, that's the point behind this. So for lab 13, we have two different sets of material. We have our first one, which is a standard plate or sometimes even a a blood auger plate. And as you can see, the organism kind of grows in the center and then expands and expands and expands, giving you these kind of unique concentric circles, almost like if they were like uh, rings inside a tree uh, uh, cortex itself, right? You see it grow and then walk and grow and then walk moving itself outward. That's what we call swarming. In terms of the motility deeps, as you can tell, you have organisms that can just stay in the stab line that happens. So this is what you're seeing in the center tube over here. And then you have some that have this more diffuse pattern. So it looks the, like I said, this inverted tree pattern. It looks like it's branching out from where you stabbed it with the initial stab line. And then some of them move so much that it'll encompass the entire body of the tube itself. So you have this heavy diffuse growth behind it. So organisms that don't move stay in the stab line and then organisms that do move 
vertical action, move away from that center stab line, allowing you to um, see the motility itself by this red pattern of growth. So we will provide you this material. We'll provide you with additional images as well as demonstrations for the lab itself. So this is where you can refer to so you can start this lab. All right, to exemplify what we're gonna see for lab 12, I need to kind of switch around a little bit so I can show this to you on the screen. And so here, we actually have a video of them and what you can see from the pattern is that you can see that everything is kind of moving in the same direction. That is not real motility. That is just more or less a current and vibration of the earth and the table and possibly people breathing that it looks like the organisms are just kind of shifting. Now, same idea, you can see that everything kind of moves with the pattern of water. This is a different organism. This is Staphylococcus, right? And again, they're kind of traveling all together. There's no particular one uh, direction, uh, multiple directions that they're doing. They're just kind of flowing with everything that is there, right? And so what you might see is that the organisms kind of tweak around every now and then. They'll kind of rotate in their axis, but they're not quite swimming in a particular direction. It's just a water that is kind of carrying them. And this is what we call Brownian motion. It's not really moving. Now, different organism here, we're gonna show you two of them. Enterobacter erogenes right here is the first one you're seeing. You can see that even though you observe a little bit of that Brownian motion, you can see that now the organisms are truly moving around within their own area, right? You can see that they kind of bounce around and go back and forth as opposed to it all being carried away in just one specific direction. So if you kind of zoom in, you can see then kind of them traveling, not just in one flow, but changing directions as we go. And so uh, a video of this that we took from YouTube is already available to you on Canvas as a reference as well. So you should be able to access this too, right? I'm gonna show you one more organism doing kind of this type of motility, uh, which is gonna be uh, Rhodobacter spheroides, which again, kind of demonstrating uh, true motility as opposed to Brownian motion. Again, here you see a little bit of Brownian motion going back and forth, but then you can see the individual cells moving around. And here is Rhodobacter spheroides. And notice that most of the organisms are relatively stable, but then you actually see individual cells truly purposefully moving from point A to point B, whether they're kind of spinning in place sometimes or kind of changing directions and moving around everywhere. Okay, so that's what we're trying to achieve under lab 12 under the uh, microscope. You will take a couple of drops of organism, observe them under the scope, and then determine whether it's just Brownian motion that appears to be moving them, or the fact that they have a purposeful kind of direction and uh, aim to what they're doing. So now that we've observed more or less the differences between Brownian motion and actual motility, both as examples through images, as well as through recordings, let's kind of show you what we want to do overall. So the point behind accomplishing these labs is that we will give you examples of both the images and videos of these motilities. So you can have as references, both of Brownian motion and actual motility. Your job will be to be able to distinguish between the two so you can identify them, not only for the lab, but also for the uh, lab practicum. And so these are already available on Canvas as well as on YouTube, so you can review them. And then your job again is to decide whether or not these organisms are performing brand new motion or actual motility. Now, because you're gonna have to identify these, you're gonna have to use a little bit of logic associated with this as well. You're gonna have to kind of work backwards to decide which organism is which. And then based on the fact that you now know which one moves and which one doesn't, then you should be able to use those images and videos as a way to decide which organism is which. And then you can take these and annotate them in your lab manual, as well as your lab notebook. You can complete this, then you'll have labs 12 and 13 completed.